Good morning. It is Monday morning. Hope you had a good weekend. Super Bowl. I don't know if it sucked or not. I mean, if you hate the Eagles, which apparently everybody does, or not the Eagles, the the Kansas City team. I didn't realize we're supposed to hate them so much because I think Mahomes is awesome. But um, it, I don't know. I don't know. I just expected those guys to go down the field, score, down the field, the other way, score. And then with 10 seconds left, Mahomes gets the ball, right? That's kind of what I expected. Um, didn't happen. Like, it just didn't happen. Okay, so we're up at uh, Palisades Tahoe. The story this week is Thursday rain. It's going to rain Thursday. It's going to rain a bunch on Thursday, like an inch and a half, two inches. It's going to mess with the morning commute, the afternoon commute, the mountain commute, if you have a mountain commute, especially, if, you know, Lake Tahoe stuff. So if you're going to the mountains, think about that. Um, everything around it, this Wednesday deal, there's a little something tweaking through Wednesday. Eh, don't sweat it. It'll be some clouds, be a little drizzle, but nah, don't change your plans. It's Thursday, a little bit into Friday morning. Mountain travel on Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning will be a little bit sketchy. So let's see if we can load this up. I kind of like this camera. It may not. There it goes. These are folks going skiing on a Monday. We've talked about that, and someday that'll be me. Someday that'll be me. I got one of those Sprinter vans, and I was like, had one for a while. I've always had vans. I used to, you know, and uh, I was all excited about just sleeping in the parking lot at uh, Palisades and getting up and skiing, but you can't, I don't think you can do that anymore. It's just kind of a drag. So a beautiful day for skiing. I'm kind of happy for them. I'm jealous, but I am happy for them as well. They're going skiing on a Monday. Who gets to do that? Um, this Palisades again, this is just another shot. Beautiful. I always want to picture myself being the guy going down the face. Um, what's beautiful about that is everything. What's interesting about that is the ice layer, right? We talked about the warm rain, the atmospheric river. We had all that warm rain came in, froze the layer, and then a bunch of snow came in on top of it. That's what we're looking at now. So there's an ice layer, and they've been blasting and grooming and cleaning. And each day we get away, it's about avalanches, right? That ice layer is really a mechanism for creating avalanches. So as we get down uh, further away from this event the less chance there is of an avalanche because they're blasting, they're grooming, and the snow is settling. However, now we go back to, we're going to get two to three feet of new snow. Oops, I want to do that. Get two to three feet of new snow, and that's going to create um, potential problems again because you're going to add weight to that ice layer. And again, the men, the women, the people that do this know it way better than I know it. I've just been around it for a lot of years, and I was actually in a small avalanche once in and I know people who've been in bigger avalanches, like where people died. And it is probably my biggest, it's, it might be my biggest fear. It, I mean, it's just scary, right? And if I remember the one I was in, which wasn't at all life-threatening, I don't think. I was alone. But um, I, can't, I was able to dig myself out. Like, I was only like, you know, to my waist. But um, the, it's such a slow-moving thing. It happens really fast, and but then it's kind of this weird, oh, ah, I was kind of laughing, oh, ah, and then you go, oh, 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 it's one of those things. Um, anyway, uh, so th we'll be thinking about avalanches and concerns there. Again, Thursday's the main event. Right now, the main event in town is the freeze and frost advisories. Got the word from a... Uh, uh, someone who's kind enough to watch these to the end and uh, about freeze or frost advisories because I asked them I, I asked you guys like, what's a because I'm just always like yeah it's a drag for me and I again not being a, a horticulturist I'm not savvy to this stuff and the guy goes dude f citrus crops and of course I, I know that I should of course I should know that I, I, you know that's why they love it down in um, Los Angeles right Florida, right? Citrus crops, a lack of frost. So frost crop gets on the um, blossoms and of course can ruin the fruit. And I'm sure there's other, tons of other examples of that. I just never think of things, you know, growing um, that much in February. But yeah, there's, there's blossoms, especially down in Southern California. So anyway, that is the frost advice. That is a freeze warning for tonight again. This is the freeze warning in Southern California, more up towards the hills up by Bakersfield before you get to the grapevine. And then everything in Southern California is hunky-dory until you get to this event, this rain event. This is 500 millibar um, level. So it's kind of up off the app. It's up off the topography. Now, this map's awesome because it's about, you know, when you get up off the topography, things flow more evenly, right? When you're down here, there's, rock, there's mountains, there's hills, there's friction. 
up here there's less. And so this is why this model works well for finding the jet stream because it's sort of a, a not friction free, but all, uh, as, as friction free as we're going to get in the atmosphere. So it's high enough that it gets going without too much impact from the hillside. So this is carrying the vorticity, which is the red and yellow, which is just the mechanism for lift, the mechanism for instability. It's a, it's a, it can be a lot of different things, but vorticity just means spin. Okay, so we're next map we're gonna look at is gonna be down on the surface. So here's uh, 500 millibar vorticity, COD. We got that linked on the page and here's California. Here is Wednesday, see that? It's like, eh, whatever. It's sort of in a little high pressure zone. So nothing much with that. I'm not changing my plans on Wednesday, just some clouds. But then you see this guy, see that guy loading up right there? That thing's got game. Look at that, boom. That is Thursday. Let's see, let's go all the way back. Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, Thursday night into Friday morning. So it's all about Thursday, all day, front and back. The um, And we'll look at the close up on this thing. I'll back this up. This is sea level pressure and rainfall forecast. Remember the, the, the lines, surface pressure millibars. Closer together, the windier it is. So there's some north wind up around Bernie. We go forward here. Here comes Wednesday morning. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, right? What do you do with that? And again, it's sort of in a little bit of a high pressure zone. So there's not any lip, real lift with this thing. Unless, in, I think that's why the main reason we're talking, maybe some drizzle along the coast and the coastal hills because there will be some, um, uh, what do you call it? Mechanical lifting by the coastal range and then it moves out. And then here we go, here comes Thursday morning early. Morning commute's wet. Afternoon, lunchtime's wet. Afternoon commute is hammering wet. And in the mountains it's snowing, maybe two to three feet. So this Thursday thing is like what they're supposed to look like, quite frankly, you know? You got, and you see the isobars, you can probably pick it out here in the orange. It's how close they are together. So it's gonna be windy. And 40, 50 miles an hour. And when the wind gets up over 45, 50 miles an hour, stuff starts to happen, right? We can manage winds 25 miles, 30 miles an hour. But when you get over that, you start, you know, old eucalyptus branches, things start to come down. So that's that's going to be all day Thursday. And then it starts to clear out. And then Friday morning, Bay Area clears out. Mountains keep going. Boom, 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 boom. So mountains are going to end up with, again, Southern Sierra is going to easily get three feet. That's... um going to be mammoth in those areas, Bear Valley, maybe even Kirk, Kirkwood, maybe South Lake Tahoe. But the Echo Summit, Donner Summit, those areas are going to get probably two feet, two and a half feet of snow, maybe three though. And then Fantasy Land, I'm going way out now. See, there's nothing going on. So now we'll look at the amount of rain. Here is the accumulation of rainfall, GFS. That's that Wednesday thing. Don't even just act like that didn't happen. And then here is Thursday and Friday. And you can see the bullseye for the most rainfall is down the Santa Cruz Mountains, down and half uh, down towards Big Sur. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. And then Lake Tahoe snow. And then you see here, that's more like mammoth because this looks like the dynamics are favoring the dynamics being the vorticity, right? That lift. The stronger dynamics are favoring the southern, central southern part of the state. It looks like the uh, North Bay, for the first time in a while, is going to get a little break because this is not a classic atmospheric river. There will be a little bit of subtropical moisture wrapped into this thing, but it's not a, t a typical river, uh, atmospheric river. So snow levels will be pretty pretty low five five thousand feet fifty five hundred feet even lower um looking at the reservoirs this is lake orville lake orville right now is at 862 feet so like kind of right here and then it's capacity i was just looking at this this morning it's 84 percent of capacity right now so what they're and you're going well why don't they just fill it up because all this rain well it's when they put these reservoirs in here comes lake shasta too i think that's lake shasta right yeah that's lake shasta um that's like Shasta there. They, 87% of, of where it should be right now, of, where it's of capacity. Reservoirs were built, uh, these reservoirs specifically were built for flood control. And so from June, October to June, they are, their main, their primary thing is not to get water to LA, so, supposedly. Their main thing is flood control. So they have to leave room. So they're releasing. Lake Orville a few weeks ago started releasing from the spillway. That's to keep it and give yourself a buffer. Now, Lake Orville, let's see, um, 
I got uh, a couple of these are just, you know, they're, they're like, you know, not, they, they still have many feet to the top, say 20 feet or so to the top. But that last 20 feet is huge because the reservoirs are like this, just like rivers. So when you talk about rises on rivers, it goes really fast in the martini glass when you first pour it in. But when you get to the top, it really, and that's what the reservoirs are. So these last 10, 15, 20 feet of shoreline is magnitudes greater in terms of holding water. So really essentially, uh, we're, we're all at about mid 80, 80%, 85% of Shasta and Orville. 85% of where they need to be. They could go right up to 100%, but it's flood control. Um, and this next storm is going to, you know, they're going to have to release more water. So it's a dance that they do. Uh, and, this, and, and they do a good job of it, quite frankly. This is Ocean Beach. Big container ship coming in. Kind of a fun day. Tides are a lot of tide right now. Um, tides are a little bit, they're not, they're a little bit swingy right now in terms of big high to big low. Uh, the swell is going to pick up big time on this this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So big time, like 15, 20 feet. Blown out, nutty, just dangerous. This is Stenson Beach. Um, it's not necessarily going to be surfable for a few days. This is Pipeline in uh, Hawaii. They're going to get a little bigger. Today, they're like 6 to 8 feet, maybe 8 to 10 this is the place I told you yesterday not to paddle out if you don't if you don't live there, especially on a day like today, because this group of guys and women all know each other. And there is a pecking order that is, ooh, that's a nice one, isn't it? There's a pecking order that, here goes the guy. There's a pecking order that is very, uh, very established. And it's, it's good. Otherwise, people get hurt out there. Okay, that's Pipeline. This is uh, Mount Tamalpais again. And you see a few clouds hanging out. That's what we're going to see more of tomorrow. And then Wednesday, that was, it goes probably partly to mostly cloudy. There's the Golden Gate Bridge. Temperatures today in the Bay Area are going to end up essentially in the upper 50s, low 60s. I'm going to take this all the way back. Let's do that. Um, and then in Southern California, you're mid 60s. And this whole week, Southern California, you're going to get a little bit of rain as well. Um, which is also very helpful. Watching the fog in the valley, uh, side Mount Shasta, beautiful day. Yeah, they, it's almost like I didn't realize how much fog they have almost every morning and how that works, um, how that flush back. I'm going to watch that one more time. You don't have to stick around for it if you don't want to. I just want to see it do it again. It's interesting how it, right? You know, and what's funny about cold is it's coldest right when the sun comes up, right? Not before the sun comes up, right when it comes up. And watch this. So then it flushes back, it kind of goes this way again. And then it goes, oh, wait a second, I'm not done. Isn't that interesting? Huh. All right, well, listen, <laughs> I hope it's interesting. Oh, my God. Um, okay, so we got it figured out. Thursday, got some cold nights tonight, um, and maybe again tomorrow morning. And then as we go into Thursday, bam, it's, it's wet. Weekend around here doesn't look half bad. In the mountains, it's going to be a little sketchy through Saturday morning. Okay, thanks for watching.